Good evening and welcome to our Friday afternoon service at the House of Prayer of Edekai Mary's Ministries. We also have, we have as a special guest a reader for today's uh, afternoon service all the way from England, the United Kingdom. Our sister will be reading the lessons for this worship. Today, I want to, I, Reverend Idika Imeri, welcomes you to join us wherever you are in the world. The greatest desire of God is to produce a people who willingly love him and yearns for him. Those are the people that he responds to. In today's service, I want to invite you to continue with me on what I began to teach yesterday, which I will continue to teach tonight by 8 p.m. Central Time. If you, you can watch that on Ustream, or you can also join me on a live conference um, by calling in, dialing in 424-203-8400, and the participant code is 955-967 and the pound sign. And you can watch it also live on Ustream by going to the Kaimeri Show. Thank you. Now, let us pray. Dear Father, Almighty God, we thank you for teaching us the steps to our miracles and deliverance, which are steps that are permanent and will never fail us. We are asking that your Holy Spirit take advantage and take, we grant him the license and the permission to do mighty things through us. We ask for release and freedom of your people from captivity to yokes of men and women and yokes of history and event, yokes of genealogy, yokes of the enemy of yours and ours. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to release power and presence into this teaching today and into this service, that all who connect with us will come under your authority. Because until you come, power doesn't come. So let your presence show up, O oh Jesus. Let the presence of the Spirit show up so that your power will show up. Thank you for hearing us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Draw near and hear the word of the living God. Our reading is taken from 1 Kings 18, and we'll be reading verse 1 and 2. And it came to pass, after many days, that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go show thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. And Elijah went to show himself unto Ahab. And there was a sword of famine in Samaria. Here ended the reading of God's holy word. Thanks be to God. Permit me to sit and to, and to begin to share the word of God with you.
today I am gonna be sharing with you steps to deliverance and miracles. Step number two. This is the part two or step number two of what we began yesterday. The theme is steps to your deliverance and miracles. I just want to make sure that uh, the people on the telephone line can hear me correctly. Now, step number two is this. When you have finally identified the key, the problem, the problem in your life and family, when you have spent time to find out what is playing out, what are the problems, what are the cycles, what are the patterns that happen frequently in your family for generation past or generation present. You, you have to watch. Don't just be a bystander. Watch what is happening in your family, what has been playing out. You must watch. You must know it. Do not ever be a fool when it comes to the issue of knowing what is the cycle, what is the pattern, what happened easily to people in your family. What do they die of? What kind of misfortune comes to them? You have also to know where is God in all these things. You have to know what the word of God says about miracles and deliverance so that your family is delivered from from all these spectacular and special events that happens catastrophically in your family life. And you have to put a stop to it because until you begin to break what has been breaking your families, that thing will turn and break you too. Until you chase what has been chasing members of your families, that thing will turn around and chase you too. Now, step number two. When you've discovered who, what is the what is what is happening, whether it be the spirit of failure, whether it be the spirit of judgment, whether it be the spirit of accusation, whether it be dedication to Satan, whether it be a curse or a spell, familiar spirit, whether it be the spirit of infirmity, torment, pain, heaviness, dump, death spirit, whatever, identify what is it. What, what is going on. Now, when you identify it, find out what the Word of God says about your deliverance and miracles. And that's why people like myself am available to help you. Then the next thing that you have to do, which is step two, is this. Identify the human, the physical human actors or actresses who personifies those spirits of darkness who in the physical existence represent those demons or fallen angelic entities you must you must you must find out there is somebody in your family who carries a satanic anointing, there must be at least one person. At least one person. If it's not in your small father, mother, brothers and sisters, what about the uncles? What about the nephews? What about the aunties? There is somebody in the wider family who carries the altar, the basket, who carries the pot, who carries the light, the candle. What I will summarize as an anointing of darkness. There is one person who carries it. Because that thing, the thing that is running in their family to destroy it or to control it, always has somebody 
that it continue that work progressively from generation to generation. There will always be somebody. Find out who is the key human player in the, in the land of Israel. In 1 Kings 17 and 18, we discover there were two human entities who are the main key players that represented Baal. And that is Ahab. First is Jezebel. Two is Ahab. So in reality, the ruler of Israel after that time was Jezebel. She is dedicated to Baal. Whoever is dedicated to a particular deity rules that territory physically. Jezebel was actually ruling. Ahab was weak, but Jezebel was strong because she carries a satanic anointing. And the husband also carried half of that satanic anointing. Whatever Jezebel says, Ahab did. What Ahab could not do as a man, Jezebel did. So Jezebel was a female man because she was able to be bold to do what the husband could not do. So the husband actually, the, 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 the relationship was reversed. Jezebel was not just a leader in Israel. She was a ruler. Ahab was a leader, but Jezebel was a ruler. Whoever rules carries the power. That's why, that's why Jezebel, through deception and lies, could, 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 could use religion to kill Naboth and got Naboth's vineyard and gave it to her husband. What the husband is afraid to do, she was bold to do it and give it to the husband. So she was bold to kill the prophets of God. What the husband couldn't do, she did. Yes, she did. So Ahab was just a follower, although he was king. That's interesting. Here, God identified the person that personifies the supernatural entity of wickedness. And that is the person that rules. That is why whoever is a governor, a mayor, a pastor, whoever is in position of authority, it's very important that he be clearly set aside for God. If not, he is clearly set aside for the devil. And with the way the world is organized, with the way the world is organized, most of world leaders and rulers are of the wicked organization, not godly. With the way the world is organized socially, and that is true, whether in the banking sector, whether in the movie industry, whether in the book industry, whether in the music industry, whether in politics, whether in business, whether in education, it is organized with greed and satanically inclined. It is organized with adultery, immorality, and deception, and lies. And God said to Elijah, Go and meet Ahab until you begin to interact with the power, the physical personification of the demonic entity that rules your life or family. Until you know and you see. For example, I live in Wichita, Kansas, and I've been wondering where, what represents. The, 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 the supernatural wickedness in the city. And I've been able to find it. Finally, I was able to identify it. I was able to identify the power point. Where is the power point of your city? Where something might have been buried or something might have, or a confession or something was made, something was predicted, projected, programmed. That's what is running your city. That's what is running your nation. That is what is running your family. That is what is running your life. 
Who programmed what? Who predicted what? Who projected what? Ahab carried, he and Jezebel carried with them the personification of Baal. And that is why you have Baal worship and God was abolished. The issue of God was abolished in Israel. They ran, God was an underground business. Jehovah and the worship of Jehovah became an underground business. And Baal was enthroned, even religiously. So that's why you shouldn't allow anybody to use religion to fool you. Now, when you identify the human personification, the human symbol of the problem that is going on, then you now have power to demonstrate. I don't want to go ahead of me, but I just want you to know that when once you, I want you to find out who in your life is the medium of power of darkness in your family who carries who who among your boyfriend who among your girlfriends who among your workers your colleagues and your job or your professional uh, work who in your community carries satanic anointing that the devil uses to run the affair of that place of your life whenever the person comes around you things just completely fall apart who so i want you to begin to look at that god told elijah go and meet ahab because god knew that man represented wickedness he is the tool and many world leaders and rulers represent the force of wickedness I'm not saying all of them, but some of them too. I know of some world leaders and rulers who are completely dedicated to the Lord Jesus Christ and to the Holy Ghost and to the Father and to the Church of the Living God. I know. So I want you to begin to look at these things. And when you identify who carries satanic anointing among your colleagues, among your family, among, 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 in your city. It is about that if you cannot approach them, to begin to talk to them and to demonstrate the power of God to them so that they can follow God, then deal with it on your knees. Go on fasting and prayer. Go around your city and anoint your city. That's why you should, you should get those anointing oil from me. Buy them from me so that you can carry the anointing oil to anoint your place of your job, anoint your homes, anoint your kids, your husband, your wife, anoint your village, your city that you come from. Find where people congregate in your city, like the stadium or somewhere, or like the parks where the event take place in your city or your town. And go and anoint that place and take over that city and take over your country. You hear what I'm saying? This is very important. If it is a river, go and drop some of this oil and say some serious, wicked prayer over that place. Violent, aggressive prayers. And you will see the entities who recognize your presence and they will begin to leave and they will go. That's why you need somebody like me to come to your, to your house, to come to your country, to come to your city so that real deliverance and miracles will begin to happen. That's why some cities are poor. They don't know why they are poor. Some countries are poor. It's because of what I'm talking about. That's why you are poor. That's why the generational poverty and sickness and problems. Today there is an industry in your city. Everybody is doing well. Tomorrow it closes. Everybody are laid off. Come on, Haba. Why? So I want you to identify those people. Those people who carry the public anointing in your life, in your family, in your city, in your nation. And begin to target them. Either God change them or he removed them. He, he let God get them out of business. Your job is either to put people in business or get them out of business. That's your job. There are people in your family 
who shouldn't still be there making policies, making laws, selling off their land, doing different things against everybody else. And nobody say a thing. Let me begin to minister to you. Repeat this after me. Father, help me to identify and to know who are the human agent of darkness in my life and family. Those who carry satanic anointing around me, in my job, everywhere. Shut Come on! Lord, I ask you this day, expose them. Expose them. Remove them out of my life, out of my family, out of my city, out of my genealogy. Get rid of them or change them. Lord, give me a new history. In Jesus' name, give us new history. As a family, as an individual, give me a new history. Now, 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 now. I need it now. Central Avenue, number 822, Wichita, Kansas, 
0809-647203. I look forward to hearing from you. Remember that I have special devotion for professional people, for those who want to be high achievers, who want to be rich. It's called Devotion for Success. It costs you $20 a month. Go to my site, Didikai Mary, and give me your, donate your gifts. Contribute to the ministry. And pay for those things. Either for the oil, $20 for those in America, 30 30 for those outside America. Not only that, God also called me to train people in business and investment, in politics, that's leadership, and in the pastoral ministry. If God called you to be a pastor, so on and so forth, join me at the School of Ministry, October 15, cost you $200. If you want to break out of generational poverty, you want to become rich, call me. My job is to help you, to train you to become a rich person. Join me at the Rich 1000 Plus Club. Yes, it costs you a thousand dollar for you to join me. It's a one, a live one-time payment. And if you've not completed your payment, please try and do so. And whenever you call me, I'll schedule time to be with you to begin to train you on what you are to do to become wealthy. God bless you and keep you. And thank you, my wonderful sister, for coming to worship with me and to pray with me today. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. And for all of you who are watching, God bless you and keep you. And there is somebody who has very heavy thing in your heart. You can confide in me. They die with me. I am a pastor. And I am a teacher. I am a prophet. I'm a bishop because I have pastors who might give coverage. If you need a church home, if you need a coverage, I am here for you. If you are a church, whatever you are, if you are an individual family, I'm here to give you coverage. God bless you and keep you. Remember that Jesus Christ is King and I, Dr. Dikai Mary, loves you and cares about you and your family.